You're listening to the Building Psychological Strength Podcast, Business Edition. My name is April Seifert. Not only am I a doctoral level psychologist, but I've been a successful entrepreneur for a number of years and have learned firsthand that building psychological strength can have a direct impact on your business success. In this Friday edition of the podcast, I'll offer you tools, tips, tricks, and information to help you become stronger, more resilient, and more successful. Let's get to it. I love this quote from Gay Hendricks' book, The Big Leap. It says, In my life, I've discovered that if I cling to the notion that something's not possible, I'm arguing in favor of limitation. And if I argue for my limitations, I get to keep them. Welcome back, friends, and happy Friday. Today is part two of our two-part series focused on some ways that your comfort zone can sabotage your business success. Now, if you didn't catch last week's episode, you'll definitely want to do that because it's going to make this week's content so much more understandable. Now, last week, I gave a pretty thorough explanation of what exactly your comfort zone is from a cognitive perspective. We hear about it all the time, but I wanted to talk about it from the perspective of brain science and the way that we store and use information. So I hope that little teaser helps you uh, get interested in last week's episode. If you didn't catch it, please go back and listen to it. It's really going to help set you up for the content that we're going to cover today. So today, we're going to dive into just a few of the ways that our comfort zone can lead to sabotage in our business. Specifically, we're going to talk about three ways. But before we do, I want to give a really quick recap. Okay, so from last week, recall that our mind evolved with one main purpose, to get us through the day alive by expending the least amount of energy possible. So one way our mind does that is by backburnering most of the behaviors and decisions that we encounter in a day. One decision, one key decision that our mind is constantly having to make nearly every minute that we're awake is, will this next action kill me? For real. Like, is this next thing that April's going to do, is it going to kill her? And rather than having to work hard to consistently and constantly answer that question all day, our mind kind of runs it on autopilot by asking, is this behavior inside my comfort zone or outside of my comfort zone? Because you see, our comfort zone is simply the set of activities that our mind has learned through repeated exposure, meaning because we've done them a bunch of times, our mind has learned that they are not lethal. That's it. So behaviors inside our comfort zone are ones that our mind has deemed safe because we haven't died yet while we're doing them. Ones on the outside of our comfort zone, either by a little or by a lot, they're deemed not safe yet. They're risky. They are unknown. And they require our mind to deliberate and do some hard work, some real thinking, and our mind hates that. Again, it wants to preserve energy. So behaviors or decisions that we don't have a ton of experience with land squarely outside of our comfort zones and our mind does its best to deter us from taking them on. So let's bring it back to business. Be real with me. Can you name a single week or even, I mean, probably a single day when you didn't need to do at least something for the first time? And this is especially prevalent in the early days of your business. Each day brings with it a new set of experiences, situations, challenges, decisions, and our minds hate it. Our mind is happiest when we're behaving in a habitual, predictable way. And so I want to talk about three common times when that doesn't happen, when we veer out of our habitual, predictable behavior, and our mind has something to say about that. So the first thing that I want to talk about is goal setting, super common activity for us in business and professional settings. When we set a goal, we're typically saying that we want to go after something new or something bigger. Otherwise, it would just be status quo right? And many of you 
probably set goals on some type of regular basis. So annually, quarterly, that type of thing. And these goals represent the new level that you want to get to or achieve. Now, let me ask you this. Think about the last goal you set. Think about the magnitude of that goal. What if you doubled it? How does that make you feel? What if you doubled the revenue, doubled the number of clients, or doubled whatever metric was assigned to that goal? I'm willing to bet that it makes you feel a bit anxious, a bit nervous. I'm willing to bet that you don't feel calm and confident at the idea of doubling the magnitude of your goal. That feeling, that right there, is your mind kicking in and revolting at the idea of you going after something that is outside of your comfort zone. In general, our mind sends us anxious thoughts and feelings in order to deter us from venturing out too far. The further out we venture, or even think about venturing, the louder it tends to get. And what happens as a result? We set goals that are too small. We set goals that are likely far below our true capability. We compromise on our own achievement. Hold that thought for a second. Let's dive into the second example, but again, don't lose the thread of that first one because we're going to bring it on home at the end of this episode. Second example that I want you to think about is how you feel when you achieve success. Not just a small amount of success, but real, meaningful success. Most people get an unexpected pang of anxiety. They begin, they begin thinking things like, oh my God, I can't keep this up. Or the higher you rise, the further you fall. Once again, that's your mind squawking at you because you're stepping outside of your comfort zone. Now here's the part where we need to talk about semantics, right? Comfort zone. It's actually a misnomer because it really should be called familiarity zone. Your comfort zone is simply the activities, decisions, and situations your mind is already familiar with. And many of them are actually uncomfortable. (laughs) Isn't it more objectively comfortable to achieve double the success than you currently enjoy? Yes, but your mind isn't familiar with it. And because of that, it throws you these anxious thoughts and feelings to get you to back off. So when that happens, what do we do? We procrastinate. We self-sabotage. We begin to pump the brakes because we're not used to operating at that level. And we limit our own success. All right, one more. Third one. Have you ever been in a position where your workload is too high for just you to accomplish it, but you felt like you couldn't delegate any work to somebody else? I'm willing to bet that not delegating is a habit for you. Jumping in and getting things done, it's likely the way you've operated for a long time and probably one of the reasons why you're successful. And your mind has grown accustomed to you doing all the work. Now, I hope you're already jumping to the conclusion here. If you're already thinking, yep, and that means my mind doesn't like the idea of me breaking the habit of doing all the work myself, delegating is unfamiliar and outside my comfort zone, you're right. For many of us, We begin our business journey by doing everything ourselves and making the transition to delegating to a team. It can be so hard and our minds don't help us out at all. They send us thoughts like, oh, it's going to take twice as long to train that person than if I did it myself or they won't do it as well as I can do it. I'm better than them or I don't have the money to hire somebody full time. And because of these anxious thoughts and feelings, we're less likely to delegate. And our business doesn't grow. So let's recap these three examples and do know that these are just examples. There are dozens more. Our comfort zone makes us set goals that are too small, number one. Number two, it makes us sabotage if we achieve too much too fast. And number three, it causes us to avoid getting the help and the support we need in order to grow our business. What? I mean, think about that. Put all that together. And you can see where our comfort zone is such a limitation for us. There's an antidote, though. 
And just by listening to this episode, you've already taken the first step. You're becoming aware of when you feel those anxious feelings and experience those anxious thoughts. You're understanding that it's just your mind intervening, that they really don't mean anything. Already, just because of your, the fact that you're taking the time to be here, you should be patting yourself on the back. But let's go even one step further. The next thing I want you to do is to start practicing putting some distance between your chattering mind and you. You've heard me and probably a million other people say it all the time. You are not your thoughts. So the next time you find yourself thinking, oh my gosh, I can't keep up with this level of success or any of the examples that we've used here or any other ones that would fall into this domain, I want you to reframe it linguistically. I want you to say, instead of I can't keep up with this level of success, I want you to say, I'm noticing that I'm having the thought that I won't be able to sustain this level of success. Let's dig into the nuance there. By saying the words, I'm noticing, you're taking the position of an observer of your thoughts rather than fusing with them or being hooked or caught up by them. You're just observing them. And then by saying, I'm having the thought that, you're acknowledging that it's just a thought. It's not capital T truth. It's just a thought that you're having, and it has no bearing on what you actually can or can't handle. I'm noticing that I'm having the thought that, and then state whatever it is you're thinking. For real, it seems so simple, but try it out. This is one of those things that is something for you to practice. You'll start to reap the rewards the longer that you do this. And the last thing I'll say is this. What if you started to reframe what the anxiety of stepping out of your comfort zone actually means to you? What if instead of making it mean that you're doing something wrong or risky or dangerous, what if you took it as a sign that you just might be on the right path? What if it means that you're growing? What if it means that you're expanding in your capability as a business owner? Try all of this out. Don't let your comfort zone hold you back. And in closing, I want to give you one more quote by Gay Hendricks, and it's this. The goal in life is not to attain some imaginary ideal. It's to find and fully use our own gifts. Now, before I go, I've been talking on these last few episodes about the Blinkist app, which takes some of the best, most influential, most valuable nonfiction books, and it gists them down into 15 to 20 minute summaries. So in 15 to 20 minutes, you can listen to a series of Blinks and understand the key concepts, the insights, the take home points from some of the most transformative books. And if you liked this episode and last week's episode and are excited about continuing this learning in this area, you definitely want to check out the Blinkist summary of the book, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. That's where all the quotes that I have mentioned in this episode came from. It hits squarely on the role that your comfort zone plays in keeping you small and you can check it out for free. I want to thank Blinkist for sponsoring this show. And because you're a listener, you can try Blinkist for free for yourself for seven days using the link in this episode description. And this is a big deal. For a limited time, if you click the the link below, you can get 40% off a full year of Blinkist. 40. Right now, for a very limited time, it's their spring sale. So if you're interested in Blinkist, act fast. The offer ends soon. Thank you so much for joining me for this business edition of the Building Psych Strength Podcast. If you're an entrepreneur, current or aspiring, and you're interested in becoming more successful, hit the subscribe button. Until next week, be strong, be resilient, and be successful.